Hello, hello everybody to season three, episode 15 of the LJL officially unofficial podcast with me, one of your three co-hosts, Mars Swan, the man who's always in the middle, who's staring you directly into your eyes constantly, lovingly, uh, seductively. Um despite i'm frozen everyone else in the state yeah. to look at you like this yeah. oh no this is a really I'm, good start I, this, this is a really, really good start the <laughs> worst of starts this is the best of starts right keep like, going no i oh. like there we go you know, um, daring you know I, I like to think um you know if we got the james webb's uh, the james webb space telescope yeah. and looked like yeah. into 13 billion light years away you'd still be hearing like echoes of sam's like discordy bit voice <laughs> just echoing across the cosmos what also gets me is right now he's hearing everything you and me are saying perfectly because you know that's how this works he yeah. hears us flawlessly like a certain player in the I, I got i got you stretched out over the cosmos as well i'm afraid Oh, oh really? <laughs> well, welcome yeah, back. So you was, are the man in the middle. So, so, so to explain, it was really weird. So, like, Alex was, and when then so it was almost like Lexi was having a separate conversation while Alex was stretched out, and then it all caught up at once. It was a bizarre experience. It was like some like nouveau avant-garde music thing going on. There was a marimba somewhere. Oh my god, not that. Maybe... That's a very specific red reference. We'll say. Maybe that was after Alex. And nobody else. Maybe we're like vampires from uh, uh, the two lovers left alive, and we're all just. Um, That's it. What is it? Was it Jared Leto? Was the that? No, it wasn't. No, I didn't it watch wasn't. that. I didn't watch that actually. Great film. Highly recommend it. Basically, um, one of the vampires is a musical vampire, and he has created every oh, single nice. great musical piece ever. Because <laughs> he's lived forever. That's wonderful. Uh, he see, can play every so instrument as a master. It, he lived a... forever and then made Live Forever by Oasis, made famous on the What's the Story Morning Glory album um, of pop yeah. fame. And then anyway, he went oh, to Wonderwall that... anyway. The man on the other side of your screen for our lovely YouTubers or oh, Spotify listeners out there. Oh, hello, sir. Welcome what to our the sound... podcast. What about SoundCloud? SoundCloud doesn't do video. It doesn't right? exist. Doesn't exist. How are what you, Nightmare Ratho? I'm good, yeah. Um, you know, been gearing back up to do some broadcasts, of course. We're back into the middle of the split. And mm. um, well, as you can tell, a couple of internet issues over at the Hapgood household. Uh, we're off mobile internet, and somehow I've survived the curse today, but Sam has been a little less lucky. Uh, finally, managed to get on an LJL cast for the first time in forever. You know, we tried back on like day two or three or wherever it was, yep. right at the start of the split, and then. Things went very poorly, so we thought, let's not throw the broadcast under the bus. Let's make sure that we can maybe make things work. And we uh, went out to the SK Gaming facility, actually, because uh, Lara Lunardi is uh, someone that, that we're acquainted with. And, um, she's I very... joined the LJLOU. Yes, uh, came on to do a hosting day with us as well, and, and hopefully we'll see some more of that in the future. And we tracked mm. off to the uh, get SK Gaming facility because it, was, it wasn't in use in the day. Uh, we kind of traded some notes, helped her, helped her get prepped, and then we also uh, got help by her in setting up uh, something over at that location and we managed to cast some games so we it was right at the end of the first round robin um so we finally managed to get at least one set of games in between sam and i uh for that and kind of get back on get on track so that that was a highlight because it's been it has actually felt very strange not being an lgl there were, since i've started casting there hasn't been a split where i haven't been casting lgl and this was starting to feel like it so it felt very weird and alien and i didn't like it so it's good to buck that trend again been weird not having you around to be honest both of you it's, it's been weird i've been like kind of manning the ship occasionally by myself and then i miss you too it's weird that's why this podcast is so critically important because i can't be saying everything or it's going to turn into the lexi echo chamber i need you two to bring me in oh that sounds like yeah that sounds this is where we reveal that we're all figments of your imagination we're just lexi part yeah. one and two <laughs> 
Yes, we too believe that Hawks would be first place in spring yes. 2020. Wow, honey, how good is this honey is guy honey? in 2020? Is he okay? <laughs> is he all right? <laughs> Rightly, back in that first podcast episode, you guys thought I was a bit on, I was a bit crazy, but I wasn't particularly divisive because they were USG, which we, was always we, a top three team. We did actually all put them in our top three even back yeah. then. Seriously, go, go. if you go back and watch those podcast episodes, one, we're not nearly as experienced, so we're kind of high on copium anyway and just trying to be interesting and entertaining no matter the cost now we just do that as a matter of course because we're just so good at what we do right but um you know we kind of look look back to like the start of that season then like the end of it from the podcast really good like little uh, time time capsules of what the hell happened to us and our opinions of these teams we learned what it meant to actually I had analyze so much faith in burning core oh god that was a oh, lot of god. faith in burning core Ah, oh, true but then we also got the weird disconnection between Rascal Jester uh, in spring compared to oh, summer. Oh, yeah. You know what? We should have a really chill podcast sometime, just reliving some of our favorite memories. Literally just shooting the mm. shit with so, some of our favorite LJL memories. That'd be cool. Think back to Those 2020. Times when I became the best that. analyst multiple times. That's, uh, that's it was the first weird. split. Wait, no. Wait, I was I second? I, you, it went yeah. Sam... And then you, Alex, then yeah. me, and then yeah. I got back to back, and then Sam got it. Oh, I'm um, just. Did you yeah. get back to back or was it me after you? No, I, I got back I to was... back. I, I won pop quiz, so honestly, he's really winning here. Technically, you actually. <laughs> um, should, wait, actually, we never did a prediction thing for last, so Sam should actually be losing his thing. So uh -huh. you, can you can technically take Overlord if oh, you should wanted I? to, Alex. Uh, should I? Up. Hmm. I, I feel like I feel like we set it back to even, and then we do something for playoffs. Um, and we we put oh, up a big we, we do for playoffs. Yeah, I think we do it for that. That's probably the right. the most fair way to do it. All right. Well, we'll look into that. We'll look into that. Anyway, that is the OJL official official podcast. Um, what have I been doing over this last week? Um, guess tell us, Lexi. Well, we missed a week. Yes. So that's how my um uh, my life's been going, ladies and gentlemen of the end. Now I've been up and down. So wild. It, so mm. it's a weird place. I'm in a weird place. Mentally, um, my relationship's going great, but um, honestly, work-wise, real weird, which is putting me in a weird mental headspace. Mm. Uh, I don't know if I'm coming or starting or stopping or really what's going on. But Communication could be better from various folks and organizations yeah but my communication could still be better i could run the mm. ljlou better but it's a learning curve and that's mm. what we're all here for it's the adventure it's not you're not you're not there for the destination you're here for the journey um mm. but that's where i'm trying to uh keep my headspace in um outside of you know, that you're just uh you know you're not a small town boy born and raised in south detroit you took the midnight train going anywhere that that is the journey that that's what i've learned Really, the oh no, that was a song cool? by Journey, right? So sorry, right. yeah. Outside of that, um, I've just been looking to everything Steam Deck, even though I don't have a Steam Deck. I am very excited when I can get my Steam Deck, um, which maybe I might be able to get it in a few weeks. Which will be really oh, I thought you meant I thought you were talking about Stream Deck, and I'm like, oh, that's okay, they're kind of cool, but Steam Deck, I'm like, oh yeah, that's a yes. thing. <laughs> Steam Deck, I, I, I'm, I'm like fascinated by the whole thing and everything so i'm looking forward to when i can get mine but uh that's where i've been putting a lot of my time in uh yeah sam what have you been up to over the last week i have been <laughs> yeah, apologies um i have been in the uk briefly having got my mm. visa finally i was doing british student champs weird temporal course of the last episode we were both on yeah, and we both went and did that, and then I spent some time at home with the with the with the mm. family. Got to see the dog and my parents, which is really lovely, and spent a bit of time at home, catch up with some old friends we haven't seen in a, a little while, and uh, relaxed at home for a bit with my Switch and being away from everything resembling an email or Discord for a few days, and came back to uh, to get back off with some NLC action, really. So, been a really nice mix of a, a sort of like a trip home for a cool charity gig into. Getting to come back, uh, come back to Berlin afterwards. Well, so been been pretty okay for me. Nice, that's great to hear, mate. Amira, how have you been, buddy? What's what's the last week and a bit been like for you? Uh, again, got I had I had a birthday. That was one thing. I'm now older. Happy, happy birthday. Yeah, you're, you're, I you're I actually too. suddenly aged one year. It was really crazy. Like I never had that happen before. <laughs> Only had that happen multiple times before. Um, like a fan off every time. Yeah, just like oh, you're old now. I'm like shit. 
Damn, I'm old. Um, yeah, so that happened. I had a visa. Uh, I had my visa appointment, so I now have my visa to work uh, as a freelancer in, in Germany, which is really, really cool. Um, and I'm now planning a trip back home myself to the UK for <laughs> the end of the month. Uh, so I haven't been home in about five months, so that'll be nice to touch base with family and friends. And um, yeah, I just kind of, I'm going to be sofa surfing for a bit around London and then I'll uh, head back up towards uh, family home and, and kind of catch up there. And then, you know, until then, um, got a couple of uh, cool broadcasts coming up, got an NLC, of course, got a mm. potentially some LEC days and there might be some surprises attached to that too. So watch this space. That'll be some, uh, some fun stuff coming up there. And uh, yeah, that's, I'm... Um, Plotting along with the work stuff, uh, hoping to continually take on the lessons which I'm learning, and uh, in a way, which of course has been drilled into me by doing the LGLOU stuff, really, you know, just taking those lessons, roll with them, and get better, and uh, try and keep that momentum rolling. That's That's been me. Fantastic. Fantastic. With that said, though, Samuel! Hello. Samuel! <laughs> if yes. people are on YouTube, what do Sorry, I yes, need sir. from them? Sir, we need to go on and hit the bell button to make yes. themselves alerts. And then subscribe, then like and comment. Sir. Very good. Very good. Thank you, sir. Very good. You are you are relieved of your duty, soldier. I think I might have echoed through Alex's microphone there. I think you did. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> We've, I've got uh, my door closed as well, so. All right, let's uh, let's do it like the Talia uh, New Chill Vibes album. I can't quite remember what it's actually called. Uh, sessions. Uh, sessions. Uh, the other two um, chill every... Sessions to relax and play League 2. Is, yeah. it, is that what the it, Talia It's not called that, but it, it's no, not. It's called Sessions. It's, it's, Star, it's, it's Star Guardian Sessions. Star Guardian. That's it. Star Guardian set God, that's yeah. bad that the new skin line's already evaded my memory. Uh, no, matter. If, if there are an audio listener of ours on a on the old podcast device of their choosing, what would we like them to do? Hi, we're really chill here. We're not going to be drill sergeants. We want you to leave a review, like, comment, subscribe as you would do in any other form and uh, be mind controlled by us into giving us good feedback and even better responses. And tell your like friends. Um, like then go down to your local government official's office and r let them know that um, you'd like to actually apply for um, a flight to um, and a visa to to work and live uh, for the LGL in Japan. Uh, move your entire life there. Become uh, one of the many growing um, soldiers for the cause. And uh, yeah, join join the LGL revolution. What is the cause? Out of interest. Mm. Um. Aria, well, come home. Have we actually got any tenants Well, yet? we can't. Well, this, see, that's the thing. We can't actually tell you until you've joined. Uh, until it's a bit you've of joined, a, of course. You've got, yeah. to, you've got to go on faith. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like, we, we appreciate... Name. No, we, we, we appreciate the fact that people might want to know more, but but you, we, you've got to... It's a give and take. You're not quite... You're not You're not in deep... You're not within the inner, inner, inner circles. You know, there's like... No, you're not quite there. some some 41s in too deep. Yeah. I like how Sam went for the full cult mentality of inner circles, and then Alex is like, in too deep. Good song. Yes, I'm 41. But that's because you're assuming some 41 out of cult. I'm more that's, like that's how the we, real. I just like how we're like, we basically are like screaming at our YouTube audience, but for our audio listeners, it's all about that ASMR. It's because we know how to get to the algorithm. So, so YouTube, it likes the bla likes the clickbait. So actually, this is like so, the, so, the audio so comes clickbait. See, the only reason Lexi and I can do it, because ASMR actually stands for, like, Alex Sensory whatever the ASMR thing is. <laughs> it's Alex Sam Mass Swan Respond. That's what it actually stands for. <laughs> so that's what happens when we need to go live and we're not online. It's like, it's 8am, guys. Respond! <laughs> 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 hey boys, yeah, we're I'm gonna... ASMR. Can we put that? Can something we can actually have the I'm ASMR wrangling... tag on the podcast now? Go on, no, let's move. Let's I'm move wrangling on. this. No, we're, we're taking this tangent away. We're, I'm buying a new. One. I'm buying a new microphone that's like shaped like a pair of ears. No, so I can respond oh, better. <laughs> the LJLOU here to tell you that the LJL first round robin has completed, as Nymera mentioned slightly earlier. Um, with that, oh my god, I, I did the wrong thing. Uh, with that, we currently have had an extra game. That's just because of how the days work and everything, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so, um, we're very gonna quickly run down. Actually, uh, Alex, Hello. can you run down of the current standings while I sure, make I can sure... You pull that up for our video listeners. Yeah, so we've had eight games now. Obviously, the first round, Robin, is seven. So there's an extra game tacked on 
And that doesn't really matter either way for our top of the table because Sangoku are currently 8 and 0, um, coming first place out of the round, first round robin, gone undefeated so far. They're followed, by, followed up by Dead Nation Focus Me. Of course, the team which we have always kind of come to expect to be up in the top of the table, um, even in regular splits. They've had some weaker starts to splits before, but they're sat there at 7-1, and one, so keeping it close in that race for first. Uh, below them uh, is two games removed from them, the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks game in. They're 5-3, and three, um, and while we might have rated them as our fourth-placed power-ranked team uh, coming into the split, we had some good feelings about them. They're actually sat in third right now, so they have uh, outperformed numerically what we said of them, uh, at least in the first round, Robin. And below them is not even uh, the team which we thought would be third. It's actually Burning Core at four and four. Um, fun thing about that, actually, historically, Burning Core were always a fourth place team before the 2020 split. They just somehow ended up there when it was back in like the uh, the the triple round robin before we came into like our new era of lgl then below that we have crest gaming act and rascal jest they're tied up at three and five making up the rest of our current playoff bracket teams uh making up our fifth and uh, our fifth and sixth uh tied place uh squads and then below them are axes and v3 who we thought would be struggling and well lo and behold oh, they have struggled axes are two and six and v3 is zero and eight quick one on the burning core point before we move mm -hmm. on um Worth pointing out that it was always a real frustration for them to become in fourth because at the time, playoffs was only a three-bracket three. playoffs. Yeah. So you'd have a semi-finals into finals. So if you were the fourth, you were just outside of playoffs. And the moment that playoffs gets expanded, Bernie Court just kind of collapsed from being able to hit fourth well, even, place. So, so what was really funny about that playoff system, just to ruminate slightly on that, because it, it used to be wild. the semi-finals and the finals in the same day. You'd play two best of fives in the same day. So if you yeah, went five man. games in the semi-finals... You go into the finals and went. And DFM always sat there in the finals, may I add as well. Almost uh, almost to... always. Almost I don't remember always. Oh, yeah. Um, and once. what was funnier is we already had our own tape of Kazu going, I like to watch my opponents play games. It's like, oh, he must have <laughs> loved the old system far more yeah. than the new one. But in another way, he gets even more tape now. So, uh, uh, whatever. Um, I mean,. The fact that we've still got two streaks going is, is is wild. Like I didn't expect the eight O from Sengoku or the O and eight really from V three. I really hope twenty sixteen V three one. Twenty sixteen was the only one. time DFM were not in the finals, like straight off in that old system. So and they had like it's crazy. Isn't twenty sixteen technically the year that LJL officially started under Riot? Twenty fifteen. There's some weirdness. I think Square Enix used to run it back in the day for a so while as well. Remember when Square had their fingers everything, it. everything gaming? Mm, no, that's really yeah, cool. yeah. It was a weird time. Obviously, that was before we directly covered it, so our, our memories are a little bit more like from fan mentality rather than like having to deal with it as a. Broadcast. I was there <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. now we are here. To be the old magics, I wasn't there, and therefore yeah. can't remember them. But anyway, we've cool. we've gone through our first round, Robin. Um, now we have three nowadays, not just the two. We've kind of got used to that for a little bit, um, but then we came back to triple round, Robin, for spring. Uh, so we've moved back to that. Had two years of double round, Robin, into the same playoffs format, which we are now used to since 2020. Um, but yeah, um, where do you want to well, take this? I mean, first thing I, I I think I want to bring up just because it was an observation I made um, comparing previous splits to this split um this was our halfway mark ish this hmm. this would have been where we were um and just looking at the standings i think there's only one team i'm like huh that's weird every other team here i'm like yeah no i predicted or See thought that? it would be around here um and and the one team that's a bit lower it's 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 more just like i kind of expected them to be third yeah yeah then that, that's Rascal Jester, isn't it? Let's be, let's be. Oh, of course. Oh, of course. Yes. Well, all yeah. three of us just, 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 yeah. 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 Exactly. Just, just for the listeners out there, Jack, that, oh, that's yeah, Rascal Jester we're talking about. Yeah, um, obviously, I think Sengoku and DFM have been pretty clearly our top two teams, and we, you know, there was some debate about who would be where, when, and one mm. game separates them. So that's pretty much, you know, par for the course there with, I think, me and Lexi thought, well, maybe DFM would be the one above that, Sengoku the one slightly below, but that's still within kind of margin of error. And no, 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 but we need it to be like this for a bit longer, Sam, just because we want yeah. the last podcast episode to oh. still have, like, some traction to it, so mm. people exactly, go and listen to exactly. it. We need them to think exactly. Nymera is still right. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, the thing is that, like, I mean, so put it this way, you know, um, so obviously, like, 
as much as it's very good for social media content, effectively stuff like power ranking, what it really is is a vehicle to drive discussion. Um, and the discussion which we wanted to have was effectively, you know, like based on trajectories and what we've, the, the tendencies you ten, tend to see, particularly between spring and summer when rosters tend to build as well, yeah. what were we going to see in this split? And I had some good feelings about Sengoku. I made some reasoning to think, actually, yeah, they're going to be coming in really hot, whereas DFM feels like they are not going to be building so much as like reconstructing a little because it felt like they had to rejig some of the stuff they did at MSI. And that's going to be a lengthy process. Now, at the end of the split, do I expect DFM to be in the finals and contesting for another title? Absolutely. But I think Seng Sengoku were always likely going to have a leg up, and we've seen that again. They seem to be very happy with the way they play in the game right now. Right now, it's not always the most clean, but when you come into that mid game, they've been very hard to uh, bet against, and that's why they are at that eight and zero. And of course, they're the only team to be at DF DFM, and they haven't dropped a game anywhere else. It's Sam. Yeah. Like, as you were saying, I... D like Rascal Jester. Like, what's happening with them? They they were kind of your team, mate. I, I they were, and. I think there's a few things to track on. I think three. No, let's stick with three, and I'll, I'll let you guys. Yeah, let's, I want to, and I want to kind of keep Rascal Jester in that top three bubble, like relating to the Sengoku yeah. and DFM points. Yeah, my marriage. So it's obviously it, well, the the things that that were in mind for me as to why we had the top three was we thought Sol and Secret were going to be absolutely cracked as they always have been coming into a meta we've got so many ways to play through bot lane in a lot of creative ways with a lot of very dangerous powerful picks everything from seraphine to zeri to yeah. jinx or valor still viable they're like tristana's round about you've got a lot of viable options for the bot lane and most of them are really high impact high priority options hell if you're good enough if we've seen the like of you know ruler and stuff picking up the lucian even if it is a little bit more dangerous than it once was hell soul's one of the og callista players from the lck that hasn't worked out for various reasons and some of that is like a school jest game against dfm where soul make or secret makes loads of flash hook plays on nautilus across walls that manage to hook onto the twitch that unified is playing and none of them get the twitch killed absolutely none of them they all look incredibly flashy and none of them lead to the AD carry's death. And it's like, there is something of a disconnect here where the plays or the team or whatever if, isn't leading to a cohesive string of successes. And that's a problem. Two, jungle meta suck for Hachimecha. He's not been feeling comfortable with it particularly. Three, he doesn't have Jinzo. <laughs> cool point, yeah. Re Recap's been very quiet. I mean, I, I went a little bit deeper on the mm. Soul and Secret one, but... Um, we expected more out of them. Recap has has been a bit of a mediocre mid laner, considering actually a lot of our other mid laners have quite stepped up. Um, you look at the likes of, honestly, you look at those top four teams, all of them have a pretty well performing mid laner. Sengoku's got Jet. DFM's got Yahurong's got 80 KDA but right now. He hasn't died since That's the crazy, Burning Call game where he died once. Like, that's very hard to do when he's playing things like Yone. Uh, Dasher for the Hawks playing super well. Dice for Burning Call is one of their key members when they are getting their wins. Like, on the other hand, recap, not been lighting us up, let's be real. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I think if there's any one member of uh, Rascal Jester who I need to see step up now, it probably is recap because their spring was so good. Um, now, he there were some people be. who... Yeah, he needed to be good. But I think that's one of the reasons why Rascal Jester could play the way that they did in spring when they had recaps of Vegar as well. It was really, really good. Um, and while he's pulled out some fun champions, he's had a couple of good Yone games here and there. Uh, he's looked a little disconnected from the team. And when you are a team that really prides on being very coordinated around objectives, around the setup and your approach to them, having a mid laner randomly caught out um, is not really conducive to that style. You, that, you can't play that style if your mid lane is not on the same page. And I think that's been uh, a big fallback from Rastal Jester. The one thing which I'll say in regards to Sam's point about the other the other teams having, you know, very on form mid laners too, which is very, very true. I think that the top teams largely have the best mid laners in the league too. Um, they also play around mid the best. When one of the reasons Yahrong has that crazy eight KDA, um, and actually this is probably something that I'm gonna mention a little bit later too, but they've had a couple of games where they have shown how you can dumpster mid lane by winning bot first and then just using your jungle support to just come mid and make sure the enemy mid laner has a really awful time. There are some games you can do that in, and um, I think that the other top teams have shown how to do that, whereas Rascal Jesters have never realistic, actually ever historically been a team to put resources mid. I think all of the top three teams are ones which do that fairly well. So, I think I completely agree with the, the stance that both of you have on the bot lane. To be honest, um, I think 
well, especially I'm, I'm, I'm doubling down with what initially I said. Um, Soul and Secret just have not really looked like they're coordinating with the rest of the map and the team. Um, I'm also not seeing the same level of individual play from these two players. And, and I do think the AD carry support pool is um, one of the more shining lights um, of the OJL. I think we have some... I think we have had probably our best role, probably. Well, it's very difficult with the mid pool is, as yeah. well. Uh, it's, it's, it gets competitive. I think um, mid top do... three, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't, I I don't think, think I... jungle... I don't think our junglers are particularly crazy no. in the grand scale of things. Sadly... Um, like, I mean, I still think our best jungler is Steel. Yes. Oh, this split, definitely. Yeah. This split, definitely. Yeah. Um, it's him or once. Him or once. I, right there. But once needs to do a bit more for me. I'm, I just, uh, but anyway, back to Rascal Jester. Back to Rascal Jester. We'll, we'll get onto that. I've got some cool stuff for that. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to, the yeah. host must keep himself focused. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, I think, I think Soul and Secret, I'm very disappointed with them. And if this continues on, um, this could be a really bad hangover, which actually puts them in a really awkward spot when in playoffs to come around. I do expect them to make playoffs. I'm not worried in that regard. It's just more like, um, honestly, the person that you both haven't mentioned, I honestly would love to have a brief conversation about, because I do agree, recap has been fine. That's, that's it. It's kind he's, of it, yeah. He's no better than Megumin. In my opinion. Um, and I would argue Megumin has actually had... Certainly not been in. outstripping him. No. Which, um... I think if that's the level where I'm sitting with it... Uh, hmm. I think in terms of fundamentals, I think Recap's still better than Megumin. Um, I, I, I just think that... So put it this... Higher there. So it, it, it's like you're I, trading, right? I... I I disagree with that too. I think Recap and Spring showed his skin ceiling to be really, really high. Again, his Vega was absurdly good. Um, he only has like two to three champions, whereas at least Mega Min has like 50. No, no, no. Mega Min has like Seraphine and his Iron Spike Whip champions that outside of like, well, Yeah, but whatever, the Mega's right? never like, assassin, so he's always fucked, bro. True. Okay, that's true. He is obviously like a historical Zed main and stuff, like, which is a not... Well, he does play a mean Akali. His team just never allows him to pick yeah. it. Yeah, but I mean like, so so. I, I think it's, for me, it's going a bit far to say that recap is below a player like Megaman, who I still think no, has some big. Yeah, no, oh, I'm sorry, I, they're, I, on, they're on yeah. their, their par. I, 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 I think that they're close enough to call that a fair statement. I would say that I would still put recap ahead because, like, I still fair. value his fundamentals, That's and fair. I think the ceiling's there more. Um, especially with Megaman, to ju he's just a more rookie player who needs that room to develop. But to, to, the fact that it's a conversation when actually recap was for me one of the best mids in spring. I thought he well, was like, three. maybe even, I would say top three. Now someone like random minion caster was really down on him even in spring. Like, oh, he's doing X, Y, Z things wrong. And that's completely valid in other ways too. I think that, you know, when he is kind of being considered actually a mid pack mid laner, that's rough for Rascal Jester compared to spring. To add a bit more fuel on this fire, I'm just flicking through the various stat rankings. Oh no. Megamin are neck and next to each other in nearly every stat. Oh my god, hmm. and I didn't even look up the stats. Wow. Uh, CS per minute, GPM, KDA, uh, kill participation. Considering the context. Damage the percentage as well. <laughs> D GPM as well. Like they are literally one, well, they are like one, two in each of these. We're, in, we're like right next to each other on the table in each of these. Is interesting. Right is. in the middle of the table for both of them. It's very interesting. But like, so again, there is a, there is a, quite a lot of parity here in terms of at least statistically. And of course, those can lie somewhat with things like resource and the way teams play. But it is quite interesting. Yes, to hear. good. See, the, the performance you're joining the war against league statistics. It, but still, it's just something. It's another thing to add to that little, that little fire. To the, a lot of the stats are actually very, very comparable as it stands right now. But I know... I want to ask the question, and I don't want to have a mm -hmm. conversation about this, so I'm not going to push us in this direction. Yeah, we spent a lot of time with Rascal Jester. Like, they're a I team know... which has underperformed. We can yeah. definitely say that. <laughs> I think I know has been fine. No better than when he was on Axis. No worse than when he was on the good side of Axis. All right? I don't think he's deteriorated in the grand scale. I think he's just existed. I would argue this is a spot where Rascal Jester... Really wish they had Kinatsu back again, just so he could just occasionally throw down the hammer and just go all in. Because that's what he did do sometimes. And I don't I don't know if that's something that they need, but I do agree with it, Sam's at, at the top point where he was like, it's coordination. And I think that's honestly probably a fairer take. Like, 
having a player win an isolated 1v1 doesn't amount to much if the rest of your team isn't on the same page. Um, especially in this meta. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think what I think of Aino now, actually, compared to Kanatsu, because I know we had this conversation a lot in spring. I remember on paper when the change was happening, I'm like, actually, you know, Rascal and Justice don't really want to put resources topside, so actually, maybe having someone like Aino who is maybe less volatile than Kanatsu, who is going to either, you know, he's he's going to be more interactive. He's going to fight more, and that means he's going to win harder or lose harder, as, as kind of a, a that coin yeah. term for us, right? That tends to be what happens when you're an interactive top laner. Aino was more self-sufficient, um, I think go he back to junior. to an extent. I actually feel like he did. He had a couple of. I think his team fight impact wasn't there for Nap. I think his side laning play was better than Nap's, though. That's what I will say. Yeah, um, and that and, one knockdown yeah. game will live with me forever. That yeah, the knockdown carry top game. That was really good. The game which comes to mind for me, which I keep pointing to for a game, which I think yeah, this if you want like top tier, I know. Um, go back to Axes versus DFM. Now yes. I know they got three would by yeah. DFM in the lower bracket finals in summer um, playoffs last year, summer twenty twenty one. Um, but if you go to his Gangplank game there, he very nearly, like, 1v3 to a couple of scenarios just by being very proficient on that champion. And that Gangplank is probably the strong... is one of the strongest champions in the matter. Really, really strong. Um, I think that has been a bonus um, to Rascal Justice, particularly because top lane has become more about being left on an island, just being stable. So... I don't think Aino's been bad, but it is an interesting comparison. We, uh, yeah, we can definitely open up that conversation again against, you know, Aino versus Kanatsu. Who would they rather have right now? They made that trade. Yeah. So, I mean, like... Uh, like Kanatsu, so I know has definitely been asked to come to the team fights a bit more than Kanatsu would have, I think. I know, I think, if I remember correctly, the highest kill participation top laner, which tends to mean that they've been grouping with their team a bit more, playing things like the Gangplank, obviously, like, exaggerates that or stat to, a little bit more. Or to like the, the detriment of the team doing some of these TP plays in and just well, being late well, to the party. It, it, focus and the rest of it. So, mm. oh, yeah. there's yeah. definitely yeah. something to say that. So, like, I, you know, like, I, I do see that back cleaning the big, big difference, difference a bit more than the team focus. focus. It's come, but the cost of, like, personal. I was getting that. decent amounts of that, but. Um... He's getting too close to secrets that we can't reveal. Right. Um, well, if we're getting too close to soul and secrets, we, we, we need to get away from here. Get away the yeah, soul we spent ring. A lot of, we spent a lot of time talking about Rascal Jester. Like, just first round Robin. They have disappointed. A couple of sticking points to them. It's still worth remembering that they actually matched their record from first round Robin uh, in spring, where they went three and four. They've obviously lost another game after that. But it was versus Sengoku, so you know, losing another game versus the best team in the league right now. They Talking went on, about them, yeah. Because let's go on to Sengoku game. Sure. Let's I go. Think they're, they're the team that honestly, uh, what was crazy is that eight and zero, and they're running an experimental bot lane. Um, and mm. I think the big thing for me was when we discovered that Honey was the main shot caller for Sengoku Gaming, um, and the fact that they're openly swapping out their a um their main shot caller between games mm. um is just so radical because you rarely hear that the main shot caller is taken out and then brought back in what i love is that one it's an ad carry which just isn't a typical role for a shot caller two he's he's shot calling in his second language which just yeah my god can we appreciate how good honey is well and that's then, impressive and then four um, oh wait, no, they're all doing it in Korean, aren't I was about they? About to say, I thought that they were doing yeah. it in Korean. I saw your because, confused look, and I was like, wait Paz, a minute. I, I think, well, yeah, I think Paz, Paz actually is speaks okay, Korean. Yeah. So, once is once is obviously he's he's a Korean who has um, Japanese residency. Well, we don't know uh, actually Korean. what language they're shot calling in when Honey's in, but we do know when Vital's I'm, in, it's all in Korean. I believe it should be Korean either way, right? I, I would imagine yeah. so. Um, you have to even... imagine if they're starting one side, they continue it all the way through, right? Yeah, because I think changing that for a player swap... Uh... Oh, with Honey, they were speaking Japanese, according to Hina. Okay, that's really good to know. Um, that's Yeah, thanks for that. That's really good info on that one. That is I, um... insane! He, they're shot calling him in Japanese, and then they flip languages completely yeah. for when playing with the other guy. Well, that's one way in a mental space. Like, if you're hmm. literally assigning languages for shot that's... calls, that's, that's uh... actually a mental headspace. That's actually a bonus because it's a very kind, easy you've way to be get into zones. very good to get that working. I mean, I'll, I'll also say, right, that, um, oh, just a quick side note. I did drop Chronicler a message to see how oh, yeah. you propose to pronounce the name. I heard it's Vital, not Vital. But oh, I'm... Vital? Vital, I think. That it is, it is uh, Apparently, that, that, that's according to, of course, and of course, he was the challenger guy. So and until I am told Still otherwise, that's, I believe, the pronunciation. He, he is... 
Look like he is the chi guy. Outside Bonifer, of that, though, King of my um, heart, etc., etc. God damn it. Um, with that said, though, um, I mean, this is crazy. They have done the experiment between two eighty carries. Um, now I believe Honey played the first four games, and now Vital has played the last five, if I remember rightly. Um, Vital came in for the DFM game, uh, is what I remember off the top of my head. Um, but fundamentally, they are sharing duties, uh, and Honey has now played less games. She came in for the Rascal Jester game, actually. Yeah, um, not the last one. Uh, Vital's yeah, Vi in Vital came in for the Rascal Jester's game. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was Honey for the first four, then it Vital played the last DFM. four, starting with, with the, um, uh, with the Rascal Jester game. Yeah, so they played four games yes, each. Yeah, that makes now. sense. That's what I remember. Oh, okay. So, okay, okay. Yeah. So he's played. Uh, he's played. Yeah, the last four. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So Honey, Honey played against versus DFM, CJ, Hawks, and Axes. Then Vital played against Rascal Jester, V3, Burning Core, and Rascal Jester again. So two Rascal Jester games. And he's looking good. Now, I, I, I will. I, I would love to just pick your brains. Mm -hmm. What do you think, honestly, this is the, the, the long game con is with this for Sengoku Gaming? Now that we've seen them go 8 0 with this, because I don't, I still don't understand what the fuck their idea is. Uh, I've got like four theories, but I don't think any of them are correct. So, one is Vital is still a very good AD carry. I think that go back to his first game against Rascal Jasters, and what you can see they do, and I think this is more of a. Um, strategic decision on how do you integrate someone into a team. They had him on Ezreal, and they just said, look, you're just going to do very basic Ezreal things. Hit Qs and lanes, hit two item power spike, and we'll do stuff. And that was stuff that he was very good at. Once he hit his items, he was uh, doing a lot of work. And um, you can see during the laning phase versus Solon Secret, and of course, this is still a bot lane, which we have a uh, very high opinion of, even though in early splits now, actually in both spring and summer, Solon Secret have had some duff moments. Uh, Vital was doing really well. Um, was he doing anything that Honey couldn't in that sense? No, not really. But the fact that he was still doing stuff that Honey could do is like, I mean, it's still really, uh, this is something that Middlecott actually yeah, it's says. Quite so so, so he, he, he brought that up in terms of like, if he's doing stuff which Honey normally does, that's actually pretty good. So I think Vital is not, he's not going to be a skill ceiling downgrade in the best possible scenario, I'd say. The question is, can you integrate him to that point? And this makes me think maybe they're preparing for an eventual Honey departure. I wonder if Honey said, look, I'm not going to be staying beyond this year. Complete speculation, by the way, I have no information on this, um, just in terms of setting the context for that. But I, I wonder if there is some logic in saying, let's just get someone in place in case Honey actually just ends up leaving us at some point. So we can have uh, a very promising, I, well, yet yeah. another cor promising Korean yes, um, challenge player. Let's go, boys. Not um, to TSM. Please, will... not to TSM. I'll add this in as well. To Senna than anything else. And. Honey's never really been a center player. He's only ever got three career games on the champion ever. Mm. Uh, and obviously, Senna's been pretty strong over the last few splits and years. So that's that's a little bit surprising. And maybe they're just saying, actually, this is a way to get uh, someone who's a bit more of a Senna aficionado onto the oh! So that might be an, that might be another angle as well. Of course, we don't know. But that's a word to that's a that's a, a potential angle to keep hands on because he's played three games of Senna and one game of Ezreal. Uh, and obviously that means that if you're playing the center, you can put more priority, even more priority towards the mid lane where you've got Jet, who is actually looking more and more like an F-35 um, in this league right now. Mm. So <laughs> you can see why that might be a priority. And whereas, you know, generally speaking, we've had Honey as being a relatively high resource, but high impact player. So maybe that's a, a consideration as well. But we don't actually have that many games to look at these split time, right? Four games each isn't a huge sample size. Oh, no, 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 but you can you can judge some things, right? Um, and it's I think take note, yeah. though, especially a, a point yeah, like this. Yeah, which is why I have brought up what I have. I think that's fair. Though, so, uh, Alex, I want to know mm -hmm. your thoughts on Jet. Oh, Jet, I think. Uh, so I was chatting to Nelson, who is the coach oh, of did you XL. Know? Uh, Jet, uh, yeah, coach of uh, XL and the LEC. And uh, he said this on Twitter as well, actually. So, But, uh, you know, he is firmly in the belief that Jet is the best player in the LGL. Now, <laughs> I always have some caveats for ch coaches looking into the LGL because you have some people like Peter Dunn and, who, and, and the Evil Genius crew and then... Uh, folks like like Mac and Pad from Mad Lions. Where who Honey's are, going? Who are, He's going to E the Academy. I. What I'm saying. Okay, there is an. 
You know what? That might be a topic to lead into after this because there was some. I can't remember where I heard the whisperings from. Uh, Monty, but there might be... Monty, I'm. Yeah, we'll talk. Oh, we'll yeah, talk. yeah, yeah. That's where it came from. I was trying to remember where it came from. But anyway, yeah. But like, so you oh, have no, some people well, who are very, very good at scouting and some other people who are just kind of like. They're following some LPL players in other regions or whatever, LCK region, uh, players going to other regions. Like, cool, sweet, let's see how that works out. Um, but I, I think that it is currently between Jet and Ebby for the best player. No, it says the best player in the LPL, LGL right now. Um, I think that Jet has been, on an individual level, performing incredibly well. His laning phase has been second to no one in the mid lane. His skirmishing has been the most inventive, the most creative, and the most likely to get you wins just off of his own back. Um, in my opinion, in terms of like a, like a, a holistic overall player, Jet is definitely top two, probably the most important person to his team, and, the, and therefore, like the, oh, for yeah. me, the MVP of the LGL right now, in my eyes. I'm trying to play devil's advocate. No, do it, absolutely. I Open the no, conversation. I was trying to, but I couldn't think of a reasonable argument. So, I mean, so um, the, 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 really the only the reason, so the, the, I think, um, I do think it is top two, and I, I think some people would just say, oh, Jet, you know, he has the most flashy players, like his champion pool, blah, 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 carrying the most games, surely the best player. I think that really discredits Ebby, who is, he just yeah. always rules the top lane, and he has such a high level of matchup understanding and, and game understanding mm -hmm. that, like, he's always going yeah. to be in the top handful of players look, of the of the LGL. If you don't have Ebby, you're always yeah. going to be at disadvantage in yeah. our league. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and look, look, the fact you're seeing Ebby go back towards Orn and things and play some different stuff that isn't mm. pure, like, lane dom as well, it's great to see. Um, yeah, I suppose if you wanted to play Devil's Advocate, and this is, like, being as petty as you possibly can, it's like, oh, he's only playing, like, really high resource kind of assassin -y champions. He's only played, like, the Victor and the Corky, like, once. Where's his low resource mage carries? Where's the Seraphine? You know, like, pl like... That does not really a point, considering, like, how Sengoku have asked Jet to basically say, look, be the tip of the spear, we'll give you the tools to play, make, go and do it. And he's done it with such phenomenal, phenomenal bombast, as opposed to abominable and phenomenal mixed together into some phenomenal word. Um, yeah, and I think Jet's just been really phenomenal. I, I think maybe it would be good to see whether they saying, oh, could change up styles and say, maybe we can play with a Seraphine mid or, or an Ariane or something a little less, I don't know, flashy. But then again, why would you when you've got a champion pool of about seven or eight plus that can be flashy and do crazy things? And we all Aria. know he's got other things in the back pocket. Yeah, exactly. And actually, I mean, Aria, Aria, went, Aria, Aria, Aria actually went through Aria, that development. It was and, yeah. the phenomenal Seraphine. I think he said phenomenal Seraphine. Seraphine. Yeah, and he yeah. was, actually. He was. And, actually, and, and I mean, record. but like, the thing is, when Arya went through that kind of testing experimental phase, he was on the de facto best team with all of the four other best players in their individual mm. respective roles. Like, if you're going to try playing Seraphine mid and you're comp professional player... Yeah, you've got to trust your team to, like, use yeah, your, yeah, sure. your facilitating power. I mean... Mm -hmm. For sure, I do think there is a spot for Jet to do it, but I don't know if you... I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I don't think Paz is a top three top laner. I um, think he's a solid the... top laner. I think he's very fucking solid, and I want to put that out there. His, yeah, I think, like, I, I have some historical worries about him, because occasionally he's not really performed to that level. I'm just trying to I don't want to see V3 Worlds again if Sengoku go back there, man. Yeah, like, I, I think right. pa Paz flourishes when you don't actually play around him. Like, when he survives on his own and has team fight to impact, Paz is good. He's kind of like a nap archetype in that kind of way, too. I think Ebby's mm. our best top. I think... Actually, you know what? I, I would say that Paz and Ray Farky are on a similar level right now um, in um, terms of what they're doing for their team. Do I think Ray Farky has a higher ceiling? Yes, but I think Paz has actually been good for his team. He's been very stable. Had a chance, and, you know, he, he plays Gangplank. I'm just saying that's a good thing to do right yeah, now. I, I would might be put Nap and Ray Farky above a level a level above. Paz. I I think Paz has been doing really well myself. So I um... Paz has been decent. Paz. What I'll say is what I will say, and that this is old man Sam coming to bring some old school mm -hmm. LJL knowledge to all of you young whippersnappers. Um, back in the grand old days of 2018, there was a team that went by the name of Pentagram, who turned out to be a very scummy org, but did in fact have a very good roster that won the league. And that roster was Paz, Once, Ramane, Yutori Mayashi, and Gang. You might know a few of those names. 
Um, and they were very much focused around playing through mid and bot lane and leaving Paz to be a little bit more of his own device towards the top side while once was doing once things. I think my internet's still there. I uh, briefly I'm died. The we're, we're getting most of the point. We're getting the gist of it. Good. Anyway, it's not a dissimilar style of roster when one pass was succeeding as to when the one from 2018 My... is basically what I'm getting at. The thing is, I, I agree with you. I, I mean, even by that point, that was what, season eight by that point? Yeah, it would have been. Um, you couldn't just abandon a lane at Worlds or International Stage at, by that point in time. League Esports had already evolved to a place where you couldn't just oh, have... Season 8 was when the Shy won Worlds, right? So Exactly. <laughs> um, you could outperform all your enemies, but you did also need a competent team. I, I don't know, man. I just feel like Paz is just very fortuitous in the situations he finds himself in and is a very proficient player. I'm not trying to flame Paz by any set stretch of the imagination here. He, I just feel like he is... It, it has been fortuitous. He was on that V3 roster. He was on the Pentagram whatever. Yeah, it was Pentagram, yeah. Um, not Pentanet, which I was about to say is a lovely Australian orc. Yeah. Um, and he's now on this Sengoku orc. And I, I, I almost feel like, man... You're just really good at picking the right teams and right lineup sometimes, mate. Because and, and, and he is getting approached and picked, and he's trying out and everything else, right? So he earns his spots. It's just he's right up there as one of our best low economy top players. I think my, my worry comes for something like Sengoku is to um, we have seen Paz go to international before uh, in 2020, obviously with not 2020. Um, yeah, 2020 20, with V3. So yes, it was 2020. There you go. And that's why it was. He went one. to Rift Rivals. And then, too. yeah, and, uh, and then also, that. yeah, and yeah, and then obviously, I believe he went in 2018 as well, possibly with Pentagram, if I remember correct. He did, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, both times, Paz was not very good. He was the um, weak link. Yeah, and and, and the way the he got away. Was a whole other thing, really. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there was there was other stuff going on there, but at the same time, we've I've definitely seen Paz when he's put under pressure. In the 1v1, right, where he's basically... In the LJ, he can kind of play his style in the 1v1 and, and be pretty okay with the kind of low economy style that he he, he is often asked to with the way someone like a, a Sengoku plays. Internationally, you do that and someone just goes, well, if we're going to get a 1v1 and no one's can't be, I'm going to pick Fiora. What are you going to do now, mate? And he just... Um, and it's like... So, really what I... Yeah, hang on. Aura so, I, 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 I agree that it is... Uh, I, I, uh, I agree that it's worth kind of pointing out some historical stuff. I think particularly in this meta, if it stays this way, and, you know, there's no guarantee that it does, uh, I think there is, while there are some regions which do put a lot of resources top, I think actually it's, it's better right now in a lot of ways to just kind of leave yourself with a GP versus Orn versus Kale or, or whatever, have a Sejuani top, have something which just, just survives. Like, you want, you you pick preferential lanes in your top lane, or you try and survive with something like a Gragas, sure, but you're not really chucking stuff top, because typically the rest of the map is where things snow ball very very quickly and Paz has actually been adapting to that style really really well he's very happy to chill out and nullify a lot of matchups top he's actually a pretty good nullifying laner and you have him on a nullifying laner like a gragas or a gp or whatever then turns out to a team fight and has a big impact and that really fits him right now i think that currently i don't think he's playing a style which is ill fit for the meta or something is he going to get outclassed by international top laners yeah, is it going to lose uh, Sengoku the game alone? No, probably not. He's still going to be able to perform his role, and I think the rest of the team is, um, you know, f fairly high level too. So, yeah, you know, I think that potentially might be a pain point internationally, but I still think that Sengoku regionally right now are playing a, a very solid style for what they need to do at Rampaz. And to double down on that, to end it off, and to transition to our next team, he stood up to Ebi and didn't roll over, and he's been doing that for a long time. So, oh, I mean, if you can do that to Ebby, you're in a good spot. Mm. Talking about Ebby, um, Ebby's fucking terrifying right now. He, he looks he's like... He's been pretty terrifying. He, he, well, I mean, he's always been terrifying to an extent, uh, the shrimp man has. Um, but, Jesus, it looks like Ebby got, like, that one loss at the very beginning and took it personally. <laughs> and, and is, like, on a rampage to, like, get back their streak. Seven wins at the moment also for DFM. Outside of that one loss at the very top, They've looked great. They've stumbled in some of these matches, have DFM. They have not been um, perfect. They've not been no. flawless. It's not been a, a symphony in every match. It's been dirty sometimes. 
But they get down in the dirt and they pull themselves out and they get down with the sickness and pull out them Ws. Hmm. Yeah, I think over the last few games, so I, they've definitely been looking cleaner and cleaner. The, the trajectory's definitely been upwards. Yes. Um, uh, especially because like, the, the first couple were like, yeah, you're still figuring out how you want to play this, with the exception of Ebi Sejuani getting solo kills, which was a little bit hilarious. Um, which is always always fun when he's, you're running the Ignite, Ignite Sejuani top. Um, Ignite for uh, TP and that's it. Yeah, but uh, otherwise, you know, actually, you know, speak everything from Orn to Lilia to Vladimir. <laughs> he's been playing a lot of very different styles of champions and, and uh, I don't think a lot of people have quite known what to pick because a lot of things which would traditionally be a safe blind pick have not been. Even things like the Gamplank, he's gone, aha! You've activated my Vladimir trap card, and that's not been fun for everybody either. So that's been a lot of fun to watch. And on the other side, I actually think, again, Udipon and uh, Harp have been really, really good and very aggressive. Like, I'm pretty sure they're both leading in terms of the the kill share they're getting for teams. I think, like, Udipon's getting three or four more kills a game than most other AD carries in the league right now. Um, and part of that's because, you know, you're getting, like, the Twitch games where he's getting focused on and then moving mid, or getting focused from Steel and then moving mid, as Alex said uh, earlier on in the podcast. And Yes. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think I, BFM look pretty good and pretty cool right now with some cool drafts, with some very different drafts as well. Which been I mean, Scott so in terms of the kill share, it's effectively, like, Sol and Hybrid are the other two AD carries that are getting more of that. Then we'll actually Jet as well from the mid lane has more than uh, sure, yeah. I need to So, like, but he's still obviously very high up there. Um... So when it comes to um, heck, actually, I was trying to think about this bit, um, but yeah, when it comes to the Ebby thing, obviously, you know, like he is just he's he's doing Ebby things. He's going to be dominant in lane. Um, I think it is worth noting, you know, that the one game that they did lose, which kind of made DFM look a little bit mad, um, versus Sengoku, had a really bad draft too. It worth noting that, like, I had a lot of issues with that, and and um, you know, we we chatted a bit about that but, um, across the broadcast, and and uh, I'm trying to remember if actually if I was on a podcast talking about that one because, whatever scheduling stuff. But um, yeah. yeah, I think that Ebi has still kind of cemented himself as the, the the best top laner in the league, and that has given Detonation Focus me a a good layup on the competition. Is it all about Ebi? No, I actually think the most uh, um, some they've done some really interesting macro plays. Now I think. Mm. Um, a team like Sengoku, and so actually, Lara asked this question on broadcast when we were on desk, and it really stumped me for it, because I hadn't thought about this, because I don't typically think about the game in this way. But um, this was Rascal Jesses versus Sengoku, and um, no, she asked effectively, if you were to liken these teams to another global major region team to make it easier for some viewers to um, relate to them, what would they be like? And I actually think a team like Sengoku can be quite uh, RNG-like in some ways. They're not always going to be running you mm. through in the early game because RNG compared to the LPL is actually quite a slow team. But their th their thought processes for skirmishes are absolutely lethal. That's what they do really, really well. A team like DFM, I would actually call them more like a... They're, they have some similarities with a G2 or an XL from LEC, actually. I think they have something like that where they have very strong solo laners and they have a very strong uh, ability to play make around mid lane. Now, what DFM does really well, and there is a specific game I would point you to if you want to see this in action, because it is absolutely bleh, it is disgusting the way they work this. is DFM versus CGA. Yes. Yeah, DFM versus CGA, the last game which they played. So this is the eighth game which they played, where effectively they have uh, LeBlanc into Ari, and they have a winning bot lane matchup because Pike does... They, they basically get a level, level two gank bot lane, and basically that unlocks jungle support to just be absolutely free. And DFM just run mid over and over and over. And I won't do like a full deep dive on this now just because it's for the sake of time. But effectively, DFM realized if we win bot, we can just ruin the entire map. And Harp and Steel have been really, really strong. I think Harp and Steel are our best jungle support in the league right now. I think yep. that they allow yeah. DFM a, a way to make these really interesting early game plays. Have they been the best skirmishing team? No, I think Sk I think Sengoku have actually been better than than that. that I think yeah. Sengoku's lethal mindedness in the mid game, in terms of like picking you up on small mistakes and just like running away with the game, has been really. Bleh. But in terms of like the proactive, um, aggressive macro movements, DFM have still been looking really, really strong. I'm I'm really looking forward to the rematch of these teams. It is going to be shit. It hot. should be really exciting. I think it's going to be really exciting, and like especially because I feel we've seen. DFM kind of like after that initial stumble, and again, I'll shout out Temporal for the conversation he had with me and Lexi 
the last episode where he said, look, Sengoku had been waiting. They'd been prepping for DFM for months after the loss, right? True. Like they'd, been, they'd not gone to they it had the tape as well. They'd been prepping for the finals. They've had the tape and they knew what their first match was. And basically they have been waiting for the vengeance. And DFM come back from holiday, a little bit sweaty, a bit sunburnt because they stayed out in the sun too long and, you know, hadn't put the sun cream and kept going so they had to come back and they're not quite ready and then there's just like so there's just like sengoku <laughs> there with the sucker punch ready to smack them the moment they're back in the gym um so this, 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 they, they definitely of course had that going for them as well but i do think we're gonna that be so fun, much fun to watch especially because honestly sengoku's early has been a little bit rng like in the sense that sometimes we've seen some slightly ugly moments for them over the last couple games where we've gone oh god sengoku what are you doing and then it turns out jet on leblanc can still do horrible things in the mid game um, I'm trying to think which the game. I'm trying to think which game I'm, I'm thinking of here, where it got a little bit dicier than I was expecting. Uh, um, that that game, their last game versus Rascal Jester probably was like that. That's one. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. also was, their last game. Like they played. Tie that Funny how they're both games yep. which we were there on game day casting for. <laughs> Weird. Fresh Fair in enough. the mind, really good ones. In fairness, like I still pick them either way, but it's Fair funny enough. how that works out. <laughs> Yeah, no, true enough, and of course, yeah, of course, that, you know, that was a game where, you know, like, things were looking a little bit rough for Sengoku early, they lost the Herald, they lost the, the Dragon stuff, but, you know, it does mean that this matchup then against DFM should be, especially with both teams looking at pretty solid levels of strength now, a much more entertaining one to watch. In your, uh, your, your comparison to uh, a team um, for DFM, mm -hmm. I think Team Liquid is a pretty good comparison one for them, actually. Um, if only that. I haven't watched enough TL stuff. Uh, to it's all right, mate. I'm that. our resident NA expert here. I, mean, I did just notice that with the, I did see their game versus Hundred Thieves, where it went like twenty-five minutes. Yeah, first. I, <laughs> I, I will. I, I think I might That's disagree because I feel DFM are much more aggressive early. Okay, well, the theory um, behind it, TL are yes, having a... Yes, the, the theory yes, behind it's fair. there. The, the actual execution <laughs> that TL are doing right now is is different. I'm not going to I'm not gonna pretend mm. that's not there. I mean, TL are doing some really stupid fucking things at the moment. Um, it's a fun league. That's what I'm going to defend, though. The LCS is fun to watch. Like, the LJL is fun to watch. Just don't take it all too seriously, all right? Hmm. God, content creators yeah. take stuff way too seriously sometimes. It's oh, wild. I, I, like I, it's I, I hesitate. Death. Yeah. I hesitate to say this potential option as another team to potentially com compare DFM to because it's one of those ones that happens all the time. But someone like T1 a little bit as well was like a lot of lane dominance and a really aggressive playmaking jungle support. Um, and actually a lot of folks yeah, not about side lanes and, have, and a bit yeah. of a more and a, and a mid lane who's asked to play a bit more of a versatile role, often yeah. with less resources. I actually, I, so I would say actually, yeah, that's not a bad style over there. I would say, I, I, I would probably like him towards something like an XL as well, just because I'm familiar with the yeah, LEC that's now, right? Yeah. I think out of the LEC teams, I'm just kind of like, yeah, again, jungle support, really, really strong. They understand how to get the right, right lane assignments. Um, Mark, now, DFM yeah, obviously fair. makes some pretty big characteristic errors when they just overcommit to fights as well, which maybe some of these teams wouldn't do. And sometimes they also just out, they're just good enough to outplay those situations and they are kind of uniquely he placed to do there, that. In fairness, to a little things. bit. So yeah, and again, this, which is why this, these kind of comparisons yeah. fall apart at some point, but that's the ballpark we're looking at, right? And if you want a Magic the Gathering player comparison, people, Yuya of Watanabe is a perfect comparison if you know who that is. Fantastic player, all of oh. famous. Boo! Um, wow, wow, Lexi! There we go. There we go. There, there you go. One of the to Google that again. now. I have no idea. Um, I don't like not knowing references. What uh, is this? Very good. Very good. Yuya Watanabe, uh, absolutely stone cold killer. Um, uh, anyway, though, talking about stone cold killers, it's like we fucking predicted them to be third or something, lads. It's it's like a whole. I, I'm go I'm gonna oh, lift the veil yes. for our fans of the LJLOU. Uh, all of our volunteers, which we love and adore, and this whole project would not be po now possible without all of them. A lot of them doubted us when all three of us unanimously came back and were like, oh yes, yeah, so uh, Hawks aren't going to be third. <laughs> huh? Hmm? <laughs> Where are you all now, huh? Weird, it's quiet. And then people are still doubting them. I don't get it. In all fairness, Hawks have been kind of... Um, they have definitely caught balls which other teams have thrown or punted yes. or done all kinds of things. They've been very good at picking up throws. Um, now, are they good at capitalizing on opportunities? Uh, that remains to be seen, okay. but they are very uh, proficient. 
Their bot lane, though, is awful. It, if they go on center Tom Kench for half their games for a reason. <laughs> like, it's just, let's just not have this interactive. I'm not going to defend Marvel. Yeah. So, um, when I when I prepare for teams, and this is like a little bit of a cheat show, a cheat sheet. If you want to like look really smart, prepare three points for any team, and that tends to be a really good way to just be like, when you've got dead air, you throw it to it. So my three points for the Hawks are: when they play through mid jungle, they look good. Dasher and Blank, when they have engaged aggressive options, they've been good. So that's like Wukong, Silas, Lissandra. Those are the champs which we've really seen been been good for them. And of course, Blank's been going on stuff like Poppy as well, which has been um, an aggressive playmaking option. That's one thing. Two. Their bot lane probably does need to be non-interactive. That's really an important thing for them. And three, I have serious issues with their objective setups. Their objective setups oh, have been... Yep. They've nah. watched more teams do objectives yep. than any other team. It's, it's or, actually or they, horrible. Or they go for the flip. They just go for yeah, a flip that they don't need to. for no to. reason! Um, well, I think that they trade that off in terms of, like, if they've min-maxed their, their points in, like, where are my skills I'm putting for my D&D character in the LJL? Um, it's like they put everything into, like, lane assignment and actually getting good rotations to get the point where maybe you can have a good setup. Um, so that works really well for the towers. They put all the all of their points into like tower taking, and none of it into like actual objective securing. <laughs> and they put like two percent, uh, two points into luck because it's the Fallout version of the the D and D. Yeah. Tree. So they go on. I don't know, lucky, and then they just sometimes <laughs> hit it. And I do feel like luck has been coming up a bit more often than they really deserve a little bit. Not to discredit their wins, but like they they play well when they're ahead at least against the lower teams. But, like, that's what they should kind of do, I mean, though. just to counter that bot lane point a bit, because I largely agree, but the last three out of the four games has been, been much improved still on that front, with, with the exception He's of the game. He's touching on secrets again that we're not allowed to hear. Am I, am, am I dying a bit here? Oh. Well, in it's fact, like no, no, it's actually, Sam, oh, three, okay. three of you are dying in different bit rates, like, overlapping each it's other. It's really hard. hard. <laughs> it's an it's an interesting harmony. Uh, yeah. Hmm. It's like you, am, you am know I, you know when you, you you know when you go to like um, talk to the Reapers, you go to talk to Harbinger, uh, yeah. and like he's got that yes. really distorted like assuming yeah. direct yeah. control. The um, picture yeah. on right now because I've actually been you know assimilated or something. <laughs> what, what do the Harbingers do? Anyways, so anyway, either way. Um, but yeah, like I, I I do think like for all that I think rightly we've had a lot of you know, criticism of Marble. Um, yep. I do think, actually, there's been a little bit of improvement over the last week or two where we've actually seen, you know, uh, the Tristana game against Axis was a lot of focus, a lot of resources early, got most of the turrets, played that pretty well. Of course, it was, you know... Axis. Wasn't a lot of like pretty well to a Felios game has been pretty well the only one that went a bit awfully was the the game versus dfm but but you to pull on playing it's you to pull the shore void. playing something the void I, just really hates yeah. him today i don't i so don't was, quite yeah, get it it's like, just it's like and it was i have my black play. backdrop and it just I killed him i don't, no. I don't really no no um, but anyway, um, Dash is still been performing the, reasonably well, they, and like, kind of yeah, um, to, to give the, me some hope for them as the split goes on as well. Yes, I yes. agree. That, go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Knocked out the park. Go, oh, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> um, uh, I think Dash has been very good. Um, I think Blank has been perfectly serviceable, if not slightly above average of the medium for the rest of the league. Um, and I think Kanatsu has been um, weirdly actually on been the been same a... kind of level. I of... think Kanatsu's been good. That's the... I know. I think. Yeah. I think. Yeah, but I think I don't know if that's outstanding. I I would argue no. it's still not the peak we saw from Rascal Jester's Kanatsu. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think like when we've seen him pick up stuff like Kale and be a late game team fine threat, I'm like, yeah, actually, you know what, Kanatsu, good job. You're actually being a carry threat. That's cool. Um, is it like explosive? Potentially uh, second best um, top player in the league or whatever. No, not really. But he's been doing a fine job. Like he's not been a liability. He's been stable in a way which you know you kind of want from your top laners right now. Mm -hmm. um, and when you have yeah, and I, I think particularly for me though the, the story of Hawks in terms of the what's really compels me is Dasher once again because this kind of is his team. You know, he's been yeah. on 
he's basically owned this slot because he came in from USG as well when Remember, they moved no, out to No, he didn't give it up. Org. He didn't give up for one split. Wait, only for a split. Oh, the top laner Aurelio main. <laughs> no, no, but, but it was still like his slot, right? In terms of, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. Like the, the slot at the LGL because he was still on the team. He was still on yeah. the team. So it's like he came, like he came in from his USG days who were also, you know, a top team in, um, the LGL came onto the Hawks and like, oh my god, he has tried to make this team flow, and they are just, they are just strapping their feet to concrete blocks, and they're just like, no, no, I'm gone, no, I don't want to be any part of this. He's just like, come get ahead of the bloody water. <laughs> it's just not been working for such a long time. But I think this year, um, Dasher was set to be like the 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 air incumbent to Arya's mid lane throne because it was Arya than Dasher. I think that was a pretty comp. Pretty, pretty solid rating in terms of mid lane as it was. Arya, Dasha, a lot of people who were kind of interchangeable, but they were our top two, and Arya was very clearly the top one at that point. Tyrion did pop in and out sometimes. In 2020, sure, but like in 2021, this, the, yeah, I mean, 2020 was a little, was different, because I think, you know, Saros was still oh, there, yeah, and that, that was weird, but weird. yeah. So coming into this split, it was kind of like, like, Arya's gone, Dasha, you're up, cool, be the best mid laner in the region um, for the first time in, in ages. I mean, back in like 2019 or whatever, actually, he was very good, right? But um, then you have Jet and Yaron crop up, and it's like, well, fuck. For God's sake. And then for Dice God's has sake. also been trying pretty hard as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, quite, they, are, they are the elite four, probably, our mid laners, but it is yeah. those four. He's no, like, but, why, why could it not be me? But what it has meant is actually Dash has had some really good competition to test himself against. And actually, he has been good. He's continued to be really good, um, just on an individual level. And w the games where he's linked up with Blank with a really obvious mid jungle combo, when he's playing something set up like, like Lissandro, or when he's gone to Silas, which we haven't seen from him in such a long time, and I love him playing that champion he's been looking really solid so for me hawks is uh, it's fukuoka softbanks dasher gaming um right now for me with uh with uh trying to integrate other members around him he's been really pivotal to this team right. garnish that statement with with appropriate statistical uh, like you know like dressings dasher is the highest kill participation mid laner by a heavy margin which probably doesn't explains a lot of that really doesn't surprise me he has to play for his team, uh, the Hawks. Very much live and die. Um, yeah. Gentlemen, I want to go a yes. bit more rapid fire on Let's the go. last yep. four teams, just because two of these teams, eh. Uh, there's not too much to talk about their first round, Robin. And the other two, I think, are kind of one is par for the course, literally, 4-4. Four, four, and the other one is a coin flip team. So... Don't really have to talk too much about that. So, yeah. um, Burning Core, their top side is really good, but the recent <laughs> changes around the bot lane haven't actually been awful. And do I dare say it, Yuhi has been serviceable. Yes, Loser, though, has actually you... been the big person in that bot lane, though. He, he's definitely been trying. I, I think we, we've definitely seen when it's fallen apart and Bernie Core fall behind. Oh my God, the wheels come off real quick. Uh, that Sengoku game, where once was on the Zac, was, was an unpleasant watch for Bernie Core. Um, as poor as a shit. Um, the, but that said, um, actually, we've seen a lot of really good stuff out of Ray Farky, whose gangplanking in particular was utterly monstrous. Uh, mm. Flawless and Dice have been trying really hard to find good carry performances and, and really take games onto the back. And yes, Yuhi and Loser have been pr pretty serviceable, despite, of course, the irony of, a, of your support being called Loser, I suppose. Um, that said... Yes, I'm lost. I... Burning Core Loser. I know. I know. Burning Core Loser, yeah. Uh, Burn Corpse Loser, hey, all, all of those memes. Um, but I, I still feel there is an issue with having a bot lane in the LJL that is only serviceable um, because so many teams in this league have really good bot lanes. Um, and I, I don't know how um, viable... There's a reason this team is 4-4, four and four, shall I say. And I do think that while serviceable is... You know, they've not been you know truly awful, not been like seriously criticized, but there is still like a... I have my issues here and I want to see more talking about wanting to see more because that's all we're actually going to talk about burning core we could go on for more but it really is no, let's get through, let's get through. there are four and four teams so like we're still waiting to see the good at the real high highs and low lows um a team we've already seen the fucking low lows and high highs because this is how they operate um, every and, game. and, and you take actually this has um a very 
good bot lane, in my opinion, actually. I think they don't have the top bot lane, but Nemo and especially Hybrid have been... <laughs> yes. yes. Yep, so, Crest Gaming Acts. Um, they are a team where if they manage to gank bot lane and get gold onto Hybrid, they are likely to win. If they don't get a Hybrid gold early game, um, they're probably going to lose. Like, that's it's really easy to tell. And you know, Middlecott being kind of the residency, it, like he, I've I've handed over that mantle to him over a course of years now. You know, like I was I was He's there the for the 2020 run. We've got it. Like someone on the yeah. team is a ritual sacrifice yeah. to the gods you know, of CGA. The, 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 the hilarious thing with this is that basically I was the ritual sacrifice for both Sangoku and CJ in 2020. I did the dual burden, and then later on, I've managed to hand those burdens off as time's going on. But, you know, um, Milcott is obviously a very fiery believer in the fact. I, I can very much see this. Am I quite as high on the Hopium? No. But this is a team which potentially can be any team in the league if things go according to their game plan. I just feel like, and we said this at the start of the split too, CGA are a team where, like, very specific things need to happen for them. And I feel like specific picks need to facilitate that. Um, they were different to what I thought. I thought it was going to be more lol bear, Kassin kind of playing volley bear, but LGL's not loved that pick as much as something like Europe. Maybe I've been tainted by my, you know, my recent kind of tenure in Europe and both NLC and LEC because I've just seen that champion so much more. But it does feel like CGA, um, they have retained this lose until you randomly win a mid lane mid mid game team fight or just gank bot and hope for the best kind of style, which we kind of saw from spring and then some historically as well, right? Where it was hell even back with gango on cga it was yeah. just kind of you gotta go bot lane because he needs in that case it was like if you didn't go bot lane he'd lose you the game it was like the reverse right way but there like was also aria you... yeah but, but 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 with aria like he'd succeed on I his mean, own he could also just like pay um, favor and win you the game but it was he was yeah. like look i'm gonna flip it guys i don't wait yeah. for us to get there don't flip it without us like yeah, listen, let why me wasn't he's not in the league yeah. anymore but for me, it was specifically a lose condition of if Gango didn't have resources, he'd go in any way and die, and you lose the game. Well, so you had to put resources down there to just stop the worst case scenario. Nowadays, it is very much a win condition where, like, you need to get hybrid. Um, you get the hybrid the resources, and he does really, really well. The reason it's a lose condition is no one else is doing carrying work right now on CJ realistically. Now, I do think Nap has been good, but the thing with Nap, and it's just always the same with this guy, like... He's very good at facilitating and finding targets in team fights, but he's not going to be the 1v9 machine. Um, that's just always been the nature of NAP. So, Crest Gaming Acts, if you're tuning in from um, seasons past or you've heard about this team before, and I talk about CJ a lot they're a very interesting team because they're just. It's like watching like a continual like burning car and not even burning core, right? It's just like. It's just like this fight. It's like, huh. This thing is just. It, I can't take my eyes off of it. It's dead. They deadly. are a bad. Oh, they are the they are the sort of main character of a bad out of hell. There's a motorbike they that's are. gone out of out, you yeah. know, out of this, you know, gone down are, the highway, crashed, and they, your they heart are a Michael Bay movie. Yeah, CGA yeah, exactly. are a Michael Bay movie. They do very specific yeah. things. They do it explosively, but they do do it all the time. <laughs> it's like uh, CGA oh. are the Michael Bay movie of the LJL. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna come in and be a bit, bit more of a, a negative Nelly here because mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm sorry, Kaito ain't ready for the big leagues. I think that is definitive now. That he one game of Zoe where he looked yeah. really, really, really good um, has shown the gap that he is an OTP. And he's a very good OTP, but he needs to expand his pool. And unlike Megumin, uh, he's still figuring that out. He is a very young player. He is actually younger than Megumin. So mm. there is a lot of time for growth. This is something we talked very briefly on when Tempora was on last episode. So we're not going to hammer it in. But we need to see something um also Kasin, i feel like has regressed um can we get him back on lol bear please um Udia is also really good so can we just literally have him running around being a nuisance and then he normally did, does do things early and then manage to counter stuff like wukong yeah it's pretty good yep but we'll have to wait and see um they're three and five they could also be five and three and we'd probably be having the exact same conversation mm. ladies and gentlemen um that's just the cga okay. coin um I still think they could be any... I, I do agree with you that what you said at the top, Nymera. Uh, I still do think they could be any of these teams, which is just a... No, they have... They have. They do have, like, the skirmishing team fight potential somehow, some way. Um, Magic, man. But, like, they, they, they don't do it by conventional means. They just, like, flip into fights and they skill check you occasionally. But, uh, yeah, they are pretty much the same as always if you have uh, partaken of CGA before. Interesting you enough. Take the players out of CGA, but that team's identity will remain the same yeah. one way or another. I figured it out. Might... 
you know what? What's the common thread through all of these iterations of CGA for us? Nap. Nap's yeah. the common thread. It's Nap! It <laughs> it's always it been him! That's God why they nap. coin flip. <laughs> he just sits top lane and goes, because that's his pose, if you guys didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, let's talk about the fires in the uh, in seventh and eighth. Um, sorry, that's dead. Uh, so Axis are now on a 0 and 6 loss streak. They won their first two games and now have not won a single match. Um, I think they are still better than V3 Esports, but there's not much of an edge there. Um, Axis also yeah. never get to play Poppy, so they're never nope. going to get a win. <laughs> Yeah. Um I think for Axis, Sangchu is good, Swamp is trying, uh Ozuka is not good. Bad. This guy Actively is bad. Bless, bless him. Bless like, his I, heart. I know he's been trying to I know he's been trying to fight be the engaged champion and obviously if things aren't quite working out, you're off on the one then that gets burnt because you go in and then die. But even so, I, I think he he has really struggled. I you know I think like, Zero nine, zero six, you know, like no, like very difficult games on things like the rail and and the like, and that is rough, really, especially when it is your AD carry. So having a support to back them up can be quite a big deal, and that hasn't really happened unfortunately so far this split. Amara, you got any words to say about Axis to add? Um, I think um there is. This is a good time to kind of stop in and say about kind of the groups we have within the table right now. Um, yeah. I think Sangok and DFM, they are very clearly our top teams. I think that they show a higher level of fundamentals when it comes to um, pretty much everything um, to some degree. I feel like actually, you know, like the difference between DFM and the Hawks is, is it's in a lot of different areas. I think actually this was something which Middlecott said on the desk last broadcast as well in terms of like how does a Hawks go to being a top tier team it's like they just got to get better at everything you know like at the end of the day this is what happens when you go between top two teams middle of the pack and then again here for Axes compared to um the teams above them even though it's one win they are lacking uh objective setup they're lacking lane presence they're lacking champion pools they're lacking um sense of timing when they're going for big plays and I think this is more apparent with a team like v3 as well but you have in axes in um i'm trying i think it was actually their last game too actually because again I, this was very apparent to me when i was watching that just because I, I was just there on the day and i was intently watching it because i was on broadcast right but um when they were playing versus the hawks it was such a bot lane bloodbath where they wanted to go bot and they put resources bot but the timing was off by five seconds it was off by 10 seconds and like that level of like fundamentals of just not having your timings down not being able to execute properly is what is setting this team behind i think they have the right ideas i think there's a lot of cool stuff about this team but they're just not there yet they, they're, they're not there yet they're not clinical enough and they they're lacking in a lot of different areas to make them into a mid game team uh, mid pack team and they just don't have that magic that they had when they had honey who uh, was I mean, one of those people who could actually improve across all areas because like he was so yeah. he was a, such yeah. a weird example of like such a spiky individual of like you play around him your fundamentals become very obvious everything you're doing think in your head how does this benefit honey <laughs> yeah but you like, can do that you can't do that on this team as it turned out that's <laughs> where mean, he you learned to try with Sanchu. yeah yeah i mean like, you can try that with Sanchu. Sanchu's clearly got hands right like we know this guy's like a really good zeri in the rest of it but it's just really not worth it, particularly in the early game, like often had like a lot mm. of random deaths and then the mid game things really snowball out from there. And we've seen Swamp not have the same kind of stability he had in spring. So, yeah, I don't know. Axis suck right now, unfortunately. Sounds right. about right. <clears throat> uh, with my great pleasure, I don't know. Um... V3 Esports um, are now 0 and 30, right? That's 0 and 30, I believe. Ooh, 0 and, yeah. 0 is it 0 and 30, 30 or 0 and 32? Uh, um, many... No, it's 0 and, no, 0 and 29. My apologies. 21 games of spring. Yeah, 21 games. One more so, game um, for Big 0 and 29. Um, I don't even think they stand a chance anymore because I think the I think Axis across the board just kind of rival or exceed every member. Like, I don't think uh, Yu-Gi-Oh is going to beat Mega Min in a 1v1. I think that'd be a fun 1v1 to watch. I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, and then when you start actually 
bringing in all the wider pieces. I think Axis just across the board is slightly better. Uh, but this is about V3 Esports. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, it, it just feels sad. Like, do we now just go for the longest lose streak in competitive league um, history? Well, so this is the thing, right? Because they were 0 3 in their losing playoff series um, last summer as well. Different roster. Different you know, roster. But, but, different in roster. But, okay, but in terms of like the actual orgs lost streak, yes. um, you now have 0 3 there, and then you've got, what, 21 in spring, and then another 8 here. So that's 29. That's 32 losses on the trot by my count. Um, including no, last year, good lord. Including that, yeah, and and that you know, in terms of like for the org, it is zero and twenty nine for this roster, and yeah, I think it is kind of fair to keep it keep it there. But either way, the only team I can think of who's ever had a loss streak this long is Ve Victus, who weren't meant to be a competitive team. They were basically a protest team and a PR stunt in the LCL when Ve Victus were not allowed to sell their spot to the to the league. Um, so the next this this is this is probably the longest loss streak in definitely in modern competitive league history i can't think of another team which has gone this long without it Pro uh, until at least in a tier a, one in, in like a world in a world's qualifying region this is not. probably the longest one we've ever Pretty close had. To, yeah. um and i actually i yeah. actually might go ping someone to try and check up on that i don't know what yeah, can we data they've got team person involved. yeah i'm gonna i might have to do some digging but like oh, this actually, is actually stats man dan if you're listening or watching dan dan <laughs> But but I, it is it is so incredibly sad for this roster because at the end of the day, do I actually think this team is as bad as like 0 031, 0 032 or whatever? I'm like, no, not really. Um, I, I think, you know, this team has had some good moments in the early game. I actually think in spring they had some really good moments. The problem is you hit mid game, you just know they're going to throw. Um, this is not the worst team I've ever seen play. But when it, I, I think, you know, this is... And that means it is really sad to see this reflected on these players who were Academy roster um, bumped up into summer. And so let I'm going to draw a quick comparison between another team which I'm casting, which is Singularity in the NLC. And they were another team which basically did a development project. And that development project was effectively Singularity going, well, whatever, let's get some university players in and see how they do. And then, like, we now know from interviews that effectively they were given zero resources and um, they didn't really improve that much from spring to summer as a whole team. Certain players did at some point, but that was personal development, right? And it feels like this with V3. I actually don't know where the development is. And it makes me really worried because V3 typically have been a team which has developed new players. It's speculation. I don't have anything like like on V3 in terms of internal stuff, but I, I'm really, I really wonder what's changed with this of roster. It can't just be budget stuff because they've always somehow managed to develop some players into it. And this academy team was one that was very successful in academy level, and the same mechanism should be there to improve. The fact that they haven't got any wins from spring or summer and they're still looking like they're really poor as a team, like I don't know what's going on there, but some I, I, I would have to assume, infer that something something weird has gone on an org level to leave this team without resources to develop itself. Uh, That's what we've seen it's... across other teams which have suffered too. And it's a bit frustrating as well because actually the last podcast episode we had a few games where V3 had gotten so damn close so damn close to getting a win and then not be able to get it across the line we had like a few games in a row with it and we were like look surely they'll get a win at some point over the next few weeks because it feels like they're not a, a, a winless team they don't necessarily look like a playoffs team but they don't look like they should be completely winless and then honestly this last week they've been kind of regressing again unfortunately and don't get me wrong there's not been the easiest matchups like i think they had tengoku and somebody else who was pretty not not easy from what i remember um and then the hawks right so that's two that's one and three that's not easy teams in the first place right but even so um it wasn't pretty and that's really frustrating to see those first few games were gave a lot of hope that there would be a win coming very soon yeah for sure um our Twitch chat is currently um, having the takes that V3 are going to get a win. At least they've still got Copium going, um, which, is, which is good to see. Uh, I, in a weird oh, way, I almost Twitch want... Twitch chat. All right, Sam, Sam's still a robot, man. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, I'll continue my point. Uh... 
Um, I do, in a weird way, almost want us to now get the new record. Um, but in another way, this is very, like, I think the damage has already been done now for development in the LJL. Um, this has already shown the rest of the, or the league. Do not commit to something like this, or at least if you're going to, you have to retain every um, single player between what, the academy uh, two up to the main stage. Losing well, well, the problem Marvel, I have is like it, it's uh, you said like you don't commit to this. I don't think V3 did commit to this. Is the problem? Well, they now. didn't. They That's, didn't keep marble, right? Well, well, I think even with that, if you're trying to go for this development project, you need to give them resources to develop because it's going to be shit for a while. And you know that. But the fact that it's zero losses across, like zero wins across the board, like for me, that shows that they actually didn't commit. I would say that this says you have to fully commit if you're going for this idea. You need to put in those resources. Understand that it's going to be shit. You have to just put in the work to develop. And I don't. I don't think that's happened. I think they've halfway housed it. I think that's what I'm seeing here. And to just go to hypothetical land, just for a split second, uh, because I knew I, this is important actually for development in the LJL. A team which is throwing a lot of resources into development at the moment and to players you haven't heard of. Um, it's the Hawks. They're actually, they sent their team to T1. They've been scrimming and basically living at T1's HQ apparently for the last like for like six, seven months, if I understand correctly, because um, of their partnership with T1. Um, so I think they're the fourth, fifth team that T1 has at their um, HQ is basically the Hawks for just scrimming. So they've been in a in a fucking time chamber for like ages. By the way, my 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 dark horse without seeing any of the teams for Academy is going to be the Hawks are going to take the whole thing. Uh, but that's mm. that's going to be an interesting take to see how that all goes. Um, uh, yeah, back to V3. Um, maybe you're right, Nymera. Maybe, maybe maybe they just didn't commit. Um, do you think, though, Alex, they're going to get a win? Mm -hmm. um, yes, I think they'll take a win over Axes at some point. I think that Axes... Well, yeah, Axes are struggling too, right? I think that they've oh, been... Yeah. And I think, I think that they can take a win over Axes. Um, I... Well, I mean, we've seen some... V3 took... Wait, they, they took uh, Burning Core pretty close in their last game, too. Um, it was a series of overcommitments that really lost them that game, and, and they've had that in many different ways before. But, uh, yeah, I think that there were a couple of games where it's in, in exceedingly, like, statistically unlikely that they lose every game. I think, I think that there are... It's incredibly hard to do. Yeah. Almost oh. harder to do than going completely undefeated, actually. In a sense, in a sense, especially when you've got match uh, match integrity um, to keep going, it's it's actually probably harder. Actually, yeah, no, I, no hmm. huh? That's weird. Wonder if B three are being in investigated for match fixing. <laughs> oh my gosh! <sighs> Wouldn't would that be a huh? something? God, that would be a weird thing. Oh, but behind the scenes, there are always things going on, so you never mm. really know fully uh, what's happening in the league, teams, or players. So, uh, with that said, gentlemen, uh, are there any topics we've not really covered through this general ramble of going and covering all of the team? Um, well, we kind of pointed out some games to watch from, from recent stuff to give us some uh, really good ideas of um, kind of what's happened in the game. Like, if you haven't caught up with the first round, Robin, and you'd like to, I think the DFM Sangoku games are a really good ones to touch yep. on. Rascal Desta Sangoku, that was a good one. Um, the last one that went by, I think it shows that Rascal Desta very much I actually think both can. of them, day one and day eight, are, are good to watch. I think particularly the last one, uh that's well i mean it's more it's a more recent check-in but yeah sure do the both if you want to check check um no, check that in but i think yeah, yeah particularly the second one the the rascal jester sangok one i think it showed rascal jester playing towards their style and how sangok yeah, was starting to become a more cerebral team i think that was a very good one mm. dfm versus crest gaming out if you want to see how to make mid lane is very sad um and axes versus v3 if you like pain uh yeah yeah that's the games which I'd point that, out, I think, if you want to yes. like, um, we'll, yes. we'll learn about some of our top teams, and then also Axis V3. <laughs> it's not quite the Burning Call CGA monstrosity. No, thank no. God. No, very few things are, luckily. It tried its best to do Dang it, man. but God thankfully, uh, yes. Um... I agree. I, th I think if uh, we've got a bunch of them... By the way, check out our newsletter, where we also have our more mm. dedicated uh, week yeah, Indeed. Week uh matches to watch where uh if you want to find out link is on our twitter uh um, go sign it's, up it's literally there always and it's free 
amazing. It'll actually be coming out not long after actually we've Three. been recording this podcast. So crazy. Mm. Ooh, exciting. Um, with that said, uh, actually, oh, this is a great topic that you came up with, Nymera. Um, mm. I think this will be a good one to probably end us off, um, with questions as well. Um, oh, I have an answer to the question that's in there, don't worry. We can do that really quickly. I've pre-prepared my answer for it, but... Oh, um, I was going to also see if we've got other questions. I've not actually checked to yeah, see yeah. if we've had any other questions out. Asked yes. Of us on. And another uh, question you've got, because we answered it last time, and I think you really want to answer it, and that's always exciting. Mm. Any... Total too early LJL MVPs for the first round robin. So, gentlemen, have you got an MVP candidate or anything at the moment in time? Initialize. Uh, you first. Uh, Putting you on the spot. Oh, no, but... All right, well, I think there's... I mean, the obvious one is Jet, right? Like, this guy mm. has been sure. so good. Like, so good. And maybe you can make an argument for someone like ebby or whatever but i feel like jet's been the real holy shit this guy's been like really leading the charge for his team yeah Jet, just the obvious one i think i think i would go for either harp or steel alongside that i'm trying to figure out which one that's i think that's it because like for me it is dfm's mid -jung uh, jungle support which has been the real like magic dust um this split that's what allowed them to have their identity um i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go with Harp. I think Harp actually is um, my short runner for like, yeah, watch this guy. Guy's still really good. I think particularly after MSI, I had a really big blow up. He feels like the LGL carrier right now. Um, mm. Not, and again, it's very hard to re like really compare to that, but I mean, if there's if there's anyone in the LGL that's playing like him and being such a force for his team, it is, it is Harp, really. I would ultimately say, and I'm going to say exactly what I've said on the document just to keep things easy for mm. you lads. Um, I'm actually not really sold by anyone being an outright MVP at this moment in time. I think we've got a, a lot of pretty freaking great players. But I don't know if I would be like, there's that guy. That person. Mm. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously Jet, I think, has been astounding. I think I, I completely agree. Harp, Steel, Ebby, especially. Um, yeah. I mean, arguably, you could also do the whole devil's advocate sort of, well, the best player might not be on the best team sort of thing. Mm. Uh, and if I was going to do something sure. like that, I'd probably look at maybe a player that constantly always steals these awards when we used to do our uh, position ranking week by week. Um, I put Ray Farkey maybe up there as an MVP candidate just because he is on definitely uh, a team that needs more resources from him overall. Mm. Dasher would also be a big um person for that idea if you wanted to go that angle but in terms I of importance yeah but, um... yeah yeah but i don't i think i'm just kind of doing that for the sake of doing that more than mm. anything because i do think really it is between jet harp steel and ebby really at this moment in time i think yaharong's yeah. very good i just don't think he's better than jet and different ro same role so sorry mm. buddy <laughs> um, you're not getting your all pro again feels bad man also yaharong yeah, is facilitated far much more than jet Oh like, yeah, I, like, Jet. I, I mean, I don't know. No, I, liked, I, I mean, mean like, once, a, once in Jet, analogy, there's, an analogy, there's this. Hmm. Did you see? Did you see what happened in that CJ game? Like it is. Oh yeah, no, sure. literally oh, completely double digit attempts mid from from jungle three. No, That's any fair. other mid laner in the league. Go back and show I, me the vo show me the vods if you think differently. But like, no, 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 I, no I, I agree. I agree. Whoa, sorry, I lost you a little bit. That's, 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 that's way right. more resources than it. <laughs> Whoa, I just got like triple Alex. That was exciting. Are, we, um, are you both going Mr. Roboto on me? I think I was briefly. Uh, and like, and, like, I completely agree with that game. I just think like, obviously, like in terms of jungle attention, obviously, um, Want and Jet have been a really strong back. duo to make back. plays. So like, and I agree that CG game was a bit nuts in terms of mid lane attention. I'm just... Also pointing out that Jet does play through once or once plays through Jet quite a lot as well, and that's been a really powerful part of Sengoku's game plan. And then they both play through Honey or Vital. Indeed. Or, or technically NT half the time, because he's on a Tom Kench and he's actually the carry. <laughs> which I, which exactly, I love. he's the farming one. That's he's exactly the real is. carry. Um, hmm. And in a weird way, actually, NT uh, definitely should get a, a little small cl golf clap because he's been playing really consistently, which is what he's always he done. So. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Golf claps, um, all around. Um, imagine I'm just now imagining um, initializes camera just with the golf clap, the clapping emoji, a gif. Uh, 
Um, with that said, Nymera, there's a question that Hina asked us last episode, which you weren't here to cover. So, um, if you, ladies and gentlemen, want to ask us questions <laughs> about the LJL League of Legends Pro League or yeah. just general weird stuff, you can ask us on our Discord server, yes. or you can do that by tweeting at us with the hashtag LJL Podcast. But Hina asked us over in our uh, Discord server, where you should all be joining, like, by, ladies and gentlemen, um, what would be the LJL's name if it was a light novel? Now some context. Light novels often have very long and overly detailed titles. Very moment, actually. I, I I feel like you know I'm I'm. I think he, I think you've definitely understood the robotos were coming. Wait, oh my um, god! I thought it was me again. Sure. No, no, you're good, mate. You know, see, I'm gonna wait until like comes. Yeah, you. you we are with the DK buddy. set. Is he back? So, hey! yes, um, I am a light novel reader myself, oh. and uh, so I've used that as part of my training for this. Ver it's um, it's like it's like no, Discord knows. Knows. It's it, like it's it knows. I thought I thought it was me again. It, it's like it's <sighs> listening. It, it knows. It's just here to like. I. I. I maybe I've sucked Alex's internet away. I've. Yeah, I've at stolen the, it the end of the, of the podcast. Like Discord, we, we want to end. Why? And it's so rough because I think I also actually worked hard on this like, novel title. I'm quite excited. Like this is just like it's like you know like the next time on Dragon Ball Z, but like for a podcast. I'm gonna tell him to not have his camera on. Um, I'm gonna, just briefly. That's gonna be. That's gonna be. Uh, okay. Time to get. Time to get the Nymera photo. You guys, I love the fact you guys would just like just crop out like half of it, just like have a really awkward crop. <laughs> no, I gave you a nice crop, so I've got to give That's him a true. nice crop. Okay, we give me the haircut. That unfortunately, right now, he's not on the best freeze frame. Uh, I know that's why I'm trying to fix it so I have a nice photo. He might just end up coming into my room. Why don't you just come in here now? Like, I'll yell over the other mic. That might be what he does. I don't know. Probably, I, I could, Possibly. I could see that. I could see that. Always a possibility. He's not, he's, I think he might have disconnected briefly. So oh, actually, oh all... no. Oh. Oh no. Oh, he's, he's gone. He's actually he's left us. Well, yeah, okay. He left. Um, so I can't remember what my one was. Do, did you have a. Did you have one? I had. I can't believe I'm being tasked with going to the worlds and killing the unkillable demon king or something like that. Yeah, and then I just definitely copied something I'd heard previously. So I, mine was That's cheating. Exactly. Wait, wait, wait. I've oh, survived. Bye. Oh my yes! god, before it dies, the title would be uh, My salary life was too boring, so I quit my job. But what's this? I was hit by a truck and reincarnated into a high-tech world as a super-powered gamer. And where, of course, Utapon is the main character. There you go, that's what I needed to survive for. <laughs> oh, I, I love, I like that Utapon is the main character. I yeah, would Utapon is very much the main character, he is a gamer. Yeah. Uh, did you hear my one out from last week? Just no, so I didn't. You know. I was, I was like, completely... Uh, I, was, I was actually hit by a truck while all this happened, and um, I was reincarnated into a Discord call. Uh, I, I, what's this? I've been tasked with t leading the LGL to defeat the Unkillable Demon King. Oh, that's... Uh, see, I like that, but I feel like it really it's is... It's not LGL reference got... enough, I know. It's, I just feel it's like Unkillable missing, Demon it's, King is such a light novel. It, it's it's missing, like, two sentences. <laughs> right. There is something to that. Could I, there does need to be more. You know what would end up that. happening is that actually, or you know how V three has a mascot. Actually, it would be a case where each of the teams ends up being like um, a magical girl who then joins the the main the main guys like romantic <laughs> interest. So, so what 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 happens, Alex? Is that Ebby like you don't have the, the little dance that happens the transformation sequence? So Ebby just does yeah. this crazy he thumbs just up into a shrimp. That's a magical girl. That's it. Yeah. And just, he, <laughs> no, he, just, he just turns into a shrimp. He just turns into a shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Cut the news. That's it. We're done. That's it. <laughs> And on that bombshell... <laughs> Thank you for listening to the LJL Officially Unofficial Podcast. We normally end these things differently, but it's... Uh, <laughs> technical difficulties be damn late. We're out. Bye! That's so good. Bye.